my Bible? It is the word of God. I believe what he says. I have what he says that I have. I can do what he says I can do. Say today, I receive the incorruptible, unchanging word of God that is able to take me from where I am to where I ought to be. Now say, I will never be the same. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. I'm reading from verse 23 and then after that we pray and get into the word of God. The Bible says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this re reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. I want us to look at verse 29, thank you so much. Verse 29, the Bible says, For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse 30 says, For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Today, I want to talk about the, the covenant meal. And I would like to take some time and really shed light on what the Bible is talking about in terms of discerning the Lord's body. Before we pray, give me Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. Give me Luke 1, 37. As I woke up to pray this morning, the Lord just kept uh, uh, ringing this, this scripture in my spirit over and over. And I'm just going to read it and then we'll see what the Lord has to say. The Bible says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Let's read it together. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Let's read it one more time. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Dear Lord, everlasting Father, creator of the universe, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. And I thank you that every time you gather us is because there's something you want to say to us. And therefore, Father, in the name that is above every name, the name, the name of your son, Jesus, I pray that you shall move in this house in a way that is amazing and special. That as we partake of the communion, as we eat of the bread, and as we partake of the cup, there shall be a release of the blessing of God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Before you sit down, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you're at the right place at the right time. And God is about to speak to you. God is about to minister to you. May be seated. Amen. Today is our communion service. And as we approach the communion table, and as you partake of what I call today the communion, the covenant meal, it is important today that I, uh, that we understand what it is that we are about to partake and how it is that we need to approach the communion table or the Lord's Supper or the covenant meal. I'm calling it today the covenant meal. It's important for us to understand that as children of God, God never intended for us to approach divine ordinances like what we are about to partake this morning in a ritualistic manner devoid of power. But we should approach every ordinance with understanding. And those of you who are watching me by television or YouTube or Facebook, I want to encourage you to kindly just get some juice and get some bread. We're going to be partaking, uh, we're gonna be partaking of the Lord's table together. And if we, uh, we get out of K24, you can continue watching us on YouTube or Facebook as we continue to partake the Lord's table together. 
One of the things you have to understand is that the word of God, uh, every time we get into the word of God, what the word of God does is that it sheds light and releases faith that ultimately will unlock the supernatural. When we come to the word of God, the word of God will unlock faith. It will unlock our faith so that we can be able to operate in the supernatural. Faith, write this down, is the currency that unlocks God's power and it's a product of what the word of God says. Let me repeat that. Faith is a currency that unlocks God's power and is a product of what is written and what God has said in his word. That's why the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And therefore, as you come to the communion table today and as you partake of the Lord's table, I want us to be very, uh, um, I want us to be, to do it in understanding. And that's why I'll be talking about designing the Lord's body so that we can have an understanding of what it is that we are doing so that faith can be unlocked and we can be able to tap into the supernatural. There's a miracle coming your way. Can I get an amen? I say there's a miracle coming your way. Can I get an amen? This year of 2022, we said is a year of greater works and I'm believing God that something amazing is about to happen in your life. Lift up your hand and shout yes. Now the Bible says that the day that Jesus was betrayed, the Bible says that Jesus gathered his disciples in an upper room. He sends Peter and John to go and prepare uh, an upper room uh, because of the upcoming Passover which was coming up in a few days. One of the things that you have to remember is that the children of Israel celebrated the feast of Passover once a year uh, in memorial, and I'll be looking at this in depth, of the day when God delivered them from the captivity of Egypt. And I want to clarify something here from the outset, uh, from the outset uh, that we need to understand, and I want you to hear me carefully that the new covenant uh, communion table is a different ordinance from the Passover, and I'll be making it clearer even as we go along. Now, the Passover was instituted by God about 1,500 years during the time of Exodus, when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, uh, and, and therefore that becomes a shadow of what we are seeing Jesus implementing in the New Testament. So, in the day, the day that Jesus was betrayed, it was actually coming to the Passover feast. It was just around the corner. The Passover feast was just around the corner. And therefore, he sends the disciples to go and prepare an upper, upper, upper room so that he can have the last Passover feast with them. And as he does that, he institutes a new ordinance, which we call today the Lord's Supper or the communion table or the covenant meal. In the book of Luke 22, verse 19 to 20, Luke 22, Luke 22 verse 19 to 20 we see our Lord Jesus Christ here being quoted by Luke uh, exactly how he did it uh, in the book of Luke 22 the Bible says and he took bread he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which was given to you which is given to you this is my body which is given to you do this in remembrance of me verse 20 says likewise he took the cup after supper saying this is the cup of the new of the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and therefore right there we see Luke writing the account that he, he must have received from the 11 apostles or the 11 disciples who are with Jesus of course you know Judas uh, went and betrayed him and of course he was he was uh, he, he committed suicide so there were left 11 disciples and this is the account in which uh, in which uh, uh, Luke is actually writing about, but also it's found in the book of Mark, it's found in the book of Matthew, and it's found in the book of John. All the Gospels cover this particular event, of course, from the eyes or from the experiences of the different apostles. Now, in that, in uh, 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 in the book of uh, First Corinthians, in the book of First Corinthians, where we read in verse number, chapter number eleven, Paul now again is writing again concerning this particular event, and he says uh, that the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed he took bread and and he and, and he broke it saying this is my body which is broken for you he said do this in remembrance of me and then verse 25 says for first corinthians chapter 11 and i'm going quickly because of time i'm gonna i'm going i'm, I'm we, we're gonna get there he says in the same manner he also took the cup and said this is a cup of the new covenant in my blood he says do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me verse 26 says for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup what do you do you proclaim the lord's death 
until he comes. Now, I want us to look at verse 27, and, and I want us to go quickly over these. First, uh, First Corinthians 11, verse 27. Look at what the Bible says. Verse 27 says, Therefore, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and of the blood of our Lord Jesus. Now, I have heard many people say that when the Bible says that whosoever drinks this cup unworthily will be guilty, it, actually, it actually means that if you drink the cup and you are not pure or you are not holy or you are not righteous, you are guilty of the body and of the blood of our Lord Jesus. That is not what the Bible is saying here because I can tell you this without any shadow of contradiction that no one here can stand qualified to partake of the bread or the cup. It is not uh, our holiness or our purity that qualifies us to approach the communion table. It is by the justification that is free of charge that has been given to us by grace because we are saved by faith through grace. Can somebody say amen? Or oh, we are saved by grace through faith. So when you're talking about drinking the cup and mortally, it is a totally different thing. And that is what Paul is talking about here in verse 28. He says, but let every man examine himself. So let him eat of the bread on the cup. And then verse 29, and this is important because this is what was going. Verse 29, please. First Corinthians 11 verse 29. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy man and up eats and drinks judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body. I want you to underline those words. Not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. What does it mean not to discern the Lord's body? Because this is why we drink when we drink and, and eat of the bread without discerning the Lord's body, we are actually drinking uh, uh, and eating in an unworthy manner. Now, what does it mean to discern the Lord's body. Allow me to define for you the word design. Write this down. To design means to separate or to distinguish. It means to separate or to distinguish. It means to see the difference. It means to see the difference. It means to judge and to make a distinction. To judge and to make a distinction. Designment also means to separate. It also means to separate. It means to differentiate and decide. So when you talk about designing what you're talking about, we are talking about having the right understanding and the right judgment of the Lord's body so that as we come to partake of the communion we are doing it with understanding with distinction having separated every other meal from the covenant meal now you have to understand that the Corinthians church what used to what they used to do is that they would come for service and they would be eating their food and in the middle of eating their food they would also be partaking the Lord's table. And Paul tells them that is not how you should do it. You should bring a separation and a differentiation because there's a difference between the food you eat and the communion table. The communion table or the covenant meal is completely different and therefore it needs to be approached with a different mindset, with a different mentality. In fact, the New American Standard Bible of First Corinthians 11, 29 the Bible says in the New American Standard Version, it says, For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not properly recognize the body, if he doesn't properly recognize the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Properly recognizing the body is critical as we come to the Lord's table. And therefore, the Corinthians church were partaking the communion without understanding or discerning or differentiating the Lord's body. Now, what does it mean to discern the Lord's body? What does it mean to discern the Lord's body? This is important because the Bible says if you don't discern the Lord's body, you are drinking judgment to yourself. And then verse 30, give me verse 30 says, and that is why many of you are weak and sick and even some of you are asleep. In fact, that word asleep means that many of you are dead. So what Paul is saying is that there is a, there is a, there is a judgment that has fallen in the church of 
Corinth because they are not partaking the Lord's body with discernment, with understanding, having seen the difference. And therefore, there is a judgment that has made many weak and sick among the, the, um, among the people in the church. And in fact, some of them have died. What it actually now brings us to is to have an understanding of what it means to discern the Lord's body. What does it mean to discern the Lord's body? Write this down. It means that we have a clear understanding. It means that we have a clear understanding of what Christ by his sacrifice, that broken body and shed blood has acquired for us. What does discerning the body mean? Write this down. It means that we have a clear understanding, a distinction, that we are able to know without a shadow of doubt what Christ by his sacrifice, what his broken body and his blood has acquired for us. Designing the Lord's body means that we understand the benefits that accrue to us as a result of the broken body and the shed blood at the cross of Calvary. And what Paul is saying is this, because you have not taken time to understand and to design the Lord's body, many of you who should not be weak are now weak. Many of you who are not sick are now sick. And there are some of you that have died because they did not have a clear understanding of what it is that Jesus has acquired for you and what it is that you have become beneficiaries of as a result of his broken body and his shed blood. Therefore, understand this child of God that if we partake without discernment, we partake the cup and we partake of the bread unworthily. And that is why we are not being, we are not able to receive the full benefit of the broken body and the shed blood. Ladies and gentlemen, the covenant meal, the communion table, the Lord's Supper is not a religious ritual which we are supposed to observe, but it's a powerful ordinance that Jesus himself instituted and it requires discernment and understanding so that we can become full partakers of the blessing of God. Can I get an amen? I said, can I get an amen? There is nothing that God will ever require of us for us to do it just because it is a, it's, it's a ritual or just because it's a religious, something that we observe religiously. But everything that is required of us by God in his word has power in it. It has power in it. It has the power to shift your life. It has the power to change your direction. It has the power to to lift you up from where you are to where God wants you to be. Can I get an amen? I say, can I get an amen? Now, how do we come to the place of designing the Lord's body? If we want to have a clear understanding of designing the Lord's body, we have to go back to the book of Exodus where the Passover was instituted. We go back to Exodus chapter 12 because that is when we find where the Passover was instituted, which was a shadow. It was a shadow of what Jesus was instituting in the upper room. Now, understand this child of God. Like I said again, there is a difference between the Passover that is, is instituted in Exodus and what Jesus instituted in the, in the, in the, in the upper room. And we'll be seeing that clearly even as I, even as I continue to teach. Now, Jesus, in the book of Exodus, you, have to, you remember when Moses has gone to Pharaoh and has brought a sign after a sign and Pharaoh has refused to allow the children of God to leave. He brought in the flies. He brought in the light. He brought the water was turned to blood. Uh, there were frogs everywhere. You know the nine signs and at, 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 at all the signs, Pharaoh refused to allow the children of God to leave a captivity. But when it got to Exodus chapter number 12, God had had enough of, of Pharaoh's foolishness. And now he was ready to bring the last card. He was about to bring the last miracle and by virtue of this miracle there was no way that Pharaoh was going to keep the children of God again 
again in captivity. His time was up. 430 years of captivity was over. And ladies and gentlemen, when God says it's your time to come out, I don't care who your grandmother went to. I don't care who your grandfather went to. I don't care what your boss thinks about you. When God says it's time for you to come out, I want to announce to you, you are coming out by fire, by force. I don't know who I'm preaching to here today, but your days of begging are over. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but your days of borrowing are over. Your days of going to a doctor every month are coming to an end. Today, I sense there's going to be a release of a breakthrough. And the thing that has kept you down for years is about to be broken. Because your day of captivity is coming to an end. And your day of breakthrough is here. Get ready to be an employer. Get ready to be a landlord. Get ready to be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot. You have taken medicine enough. I've come as a man of God to announce that you shall eat meat when you want. You shall eat eggs when you want. The days of being drawn a diet are coming to an end. I stand as a man of God to announce for with God nothing shall be. Sit down. This is your day of a miracle. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this is the day of somebody's miracle. Somebody's about to walk out. Enough of border border. Here comes your Lexus. Oh my God, enough of Lexities. Here comes your Mercedes. I want to announce to you a days of crying tears because of pain in your body. I stand as a man of God, as a prophet sent for the hour to announce that your days of tears are coming to an end and God is about to visit you. For with God, for with God, for with God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Get ready to testify. Get ready to write a new story. Get ready for God to do something amazing in your life. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost already. Is there somebody ready for a move of God? Sit down. Let me hold myself because I've got to teach. But give your neighbor a high five and tell them he's, something is about to happen in your life. Oh, come and give your neighbor a high five and tell them something amazing is about to happen. If your neighbor is not giving you a high five, I give you permission to get another neighbor. Give them a high five and tell them God is about to do something in your life. You're coming out. Let me try it on this side. I said you're coming out. I said you're coming out. Can I give you a testimony? For, for my, my daughter Faith, come here Faith. Uh, you look amazing. My daughter Faith gave me a testimony yesterday or Friday. And she told me, come here. And she told me that somebody was driving outside here. Come, come here, come this side. Was driving. And when they were driving, what happened? Don't worry, don't. don't. <laughs> my voice is blessed. Amplified. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, uh, on Friday, somebody just came in. Um, they told me they just want to get born again. They were driving by the church, and uh, they just felt that conviction and said, to, I've just come to give my life to Christ. Thank you. They were driving by the highway, they got convicted, drove into church, got saved. Revival is here. And I want the devil to know one has started. They are coming in their hundreds. I said they are coming in their thousands. I wish I could get 30 people to give God a crazy praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sit down, let me preach. The person was driving. They stopped and came in. They said, I just feel conviction. I want to get saved. Are you here? I don't want to embarrass you. But if you're that person, are you here? If you're here, let me know so that I can be able to pray for you. He said he's going to come on Sunday. And guess what? They shall be coming in their hundreds. I said they shall be coming in their hundreds. Can somebody say amen? Now let's talk about designing the Lord's body because you are about to get a miracle. 
Oh my God, I see you, the God turning around the ears that the canker worm has eaten, the deers that the locust has eaten. God is about to renew your youth. Some of you are about to be, you're telling you, the ears that the devil has stolen, God is about to give you back those ears, good measure, press down, shake. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Get ready to swing again, baby. Get ready for you to walk down the aisle. Get ready. Ay, 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 ay. Hey! Atatotome kubali. Woo! Atatotome kubali. The Bible says in Exodus 12, now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. <sighs> As he has spoken to Ellen and Kathy. Amen. In the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. I've been sent to you today. And this is what the Lord said. This month shall be to you a beginning of months. It shall be the first year of the year to you. I prophesy that this month of July it's going to begin something amazing. Somebody shout yeah. Sit down for a minute. I don't know what kind of prayer you're praying for the elections. But this is what I'm sensing in my spirit. That this election shall not be like any other. It shall be a beginning of a turnaround. God is about to establish this nation on top of every other nation. And people shall look at Kenya and they shall say, let us go to Kenya. Because the glory of God is about to hit this nation. Can I get 30 people to say, yeah. Sit down. I was talking to a friend of mine on Friday. And he said that God has shown him. That as we go to August 9th, that in the next few years, there shall be a lifting of poor people in this nation out of their poverty. For the Lord has decided our days of shame and reproach are coming to an end. And I want to prophesy to Kenya, we shall be a lighthouse. We shall be a lighthouse. We shall be a lighthouse. Sit down. Yesterday I was chatting with my spiritual mother. And I said, Mama, I don't care how it looks in the natural. One thing I know is that there shall be no abortion. Of the purpose of God for our nation. We shall fulfill our prophetic assignment. And I know it may look dark on the outside. But I hear the Lord say, it is not over until I say it's over. And so we pray because we have to see more people driving in and getting saved. Our school children shall get saved. You remember the testimony of Ngiini Secondary. 583 children got saved. And our mission team today is in Kilifi and Mombasa. They are preaching in four schools. And I know they are coming with a good report. Next week we shall be at the Kenyan National Archives with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I look forward to the day when we shall have a born again governor so that we can do crusades and meetings everywhere in our city. I don't know who I'm talking to here today, but this nation shall not go down. This nation shall become all that God called it to become. And you shall be a sign and a wonder. You shall not be going to Dubai to look for jobs. You shall be going to Dubai just for holiday saying look what the Lord my God I'm preaching to somebody sit down I'm preaching about communion Woo! verse 3 speak to all the congregation of Israel speak all to the congregation of JCC saying on the 10th of this month every man shall take himself a lamb I wanted to underline the word a lamb. Because everywhere you read in this text is a lamb. According to the house of his father. A lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb. 
Let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons. According to a man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. We serve a God that will meet you at the point of your need. And if your need is different from mine, God will tell and make provision just to meet your need. That is why you have to, to raise the level of your need. I say that's why you have to raise the level of your need. Don't be satisfied with the house of 15,000. Somewhere in Kahaba West, you can live in a 45,000 apartment in Kilelejwa. And God will still supply for your need. Because God is not intimidated by the size of your need. God doesn't need more power uh, to provide 50,000 rent. He doesn't need more. Uh, 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 uh. No. The same God who provides 15. He is able to provide 55. The same God who gives you a two bedroom apartment. Can give you a five bedroom bungalow. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But your children shall have each a bedroom. And you shall have an office in your own house. You shall not only be a tenant. But you shall be collecting rent. I feel like preaching to somebody. Grab a hold of your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, raise the level of your need. Oh, raise the level of your need. Why should you have two children? You can have four. Why should you have one car? You can have two. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. You can take your kids to Brayburn. I said you can take your kids to St. Patrick to Turin. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Yes, it's okay you they can go to city council, but also they <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, polling station. Uh, but yes, they can go to schools uh, where they have the presidential debate. Uh, I don't know who I'm preaching to here today. Raise the level of your need. Oh, touch your neighbor, touch, raise the level of your need. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 